The Greater New Bedford Community Health Center monthly video series is brought to you by Senior Whole Health, a health plan for seniors that have both Medicare and Mass Health coverage. Online at seniorwholehealth.com. Welcome to the Greater New Bedford Community Health Center. We will be presenting a series of seminars which we hope will inform the community and our staff about the benefits which are available to the people that we serve. Good afternoon. It's um, my pleasure to welcome you here at a continuing uh, meetings that we've had for uh, group discussions and guests for the elderly. And it's my honor to introduce Dr. Irving Restituyo who's also a director of geriatrics here at the Greater New Bedford Community Health Center to talk about the falling of the elderly. Um, Dr. Bristol, to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. So I have to disclose first, my, the PowerPoint that we're gonna be using here is are from, slices are from a friend of mine. She went to, uh, with me to do the fellowship in uh, Columbia University where I did my geriatrics fellowship. And she was gracious enough to send me this PowerPoint. My understanding of the lecture today is that we know we're going to be talking to pretty much uh, everybody, including MAs, secretaries, and all kind of uh, providers. So the terminology I'm going to be using is going to be as simple as possible so everybody can get the message. Fair enough? Cool. So normally what I normally do when I do my talks, and I do this a lot, believe it or not, I, <laughs> I am a little bit kind of a interactive, a funny and everything, but something happened Thursday with a patient of mine that thanks God she's doing much better now, but I was working really hard on my PowerPoint. I was, I was late, it was like 12 at night, and I was doing all my work and everything. And then I got a text message from uh, a patient of mine, daughter. She says, doctor, my mom fell at home, now in the emergency room, a lot of bleeding in the head. We don't know if she's gonna survive. This is the message I got. Um, that was, as I said, 12.30 at night. So I couldn't sleep too well after that, and I, so I decided to just be a little bit more um, I think comprehensive about the falls, and then take this a little bit more seriously for, for one very reason. After we cross 60 and 65 years old, we do falls. Gravity is everywhere, and I have to say, after, after you have a patient that, that fell at home and cannot, back to, cannot go back home if, because of a hip fracture or whatever happened after the fall, is very sad, it's devastating for the family and for the patient. And you wouldn't expect an 80, 85 years old to work after a fall, but what happened is that the daughter of that patient can no longer go and work freely because she has to take care of that patient that now is homebound, or maybe at the nursing home or in assisted living. So it's affecting everybody, including the whole family. And that's why this is a, such an uh, important, important topic. So now I'm going to ask anybody but uh, Kara and Eileen, what will be the definition of fall, the medical definition of fall? Falls. Excellent, because I didn't know the, the answer myself. Because <laughs> this, <laughs> so I look it up on the website. And I have to use this example. And I apologize for the, the words that I'm going to be using, but my Dean of Medicine said that fall, this is not me talking, I'm quoting him. Fall is like pornography. You can see it and you know it's what it is. I mean, you, you just can't define it, but you just, if you see a person falling, you can, you can say, well, that person fell. So now, maybe Eileen or Kara can tell me the definition of fall. Just to make this a little bit more interactive. Inadvertently finding yourself on the floor without Floor or what else? Or a lower level. Lower level. That, that's important. For, for, uh, and that's, ex I actually memorized the, the definition now after being joking around with this. But uh, 
it that exclude if you intentionally try to sit down in the sofa or if you intentionally try to let's say let, let me just give you an example if i get dizzy right now and i decide very intentionally to step out of here and sit down there that is a lower level but did i really uh, fail not really right so it, those things are excluded if i'm not intentionally if, if it's not if it is unintentionally then it's not a it's not a, it's not a fall and it can be to a lower level so i can fall into a chair i can fall from a wheelchair whatever it is lower level uh, whatever that was before okay in fact you can fall from a building which is a disaster but you can start the so that being said any doubts in terms of what is a fall and i do believe that everybody knows the magnitude of this because of what I'm going to be exposed in this. So that's why I'm kind of talking about this. So this is classic the picture of a falling person. And I will be moving. That was the case presentation that she had. And um, because I don't want to use her own patient, I can tell you about my patient that fell at home. She wasn't, she, she's still, she's, she's still alive. So she's 92. She has a problem with her legs. She has swollen legs as a past medical history. She has hypertension and she has insomnia and she's legally blind. So we, because she's 92 and she's so frail, we go and see her, I see her at home. And I take care of her, I try to take care of her with my, the help that I get from the staff. And, um, La, the, actually, the week before she failed, she called, uh, the daughter called me and she wanted to be seen because the legs were getting too, they were swollen up. So I decided to go there and see her. And when I'm there, she said, well, uh, my legs are swollen, I want you to fix that. I can't sleep. And Dee is here, so she can help me out with that question. I can't sleep at night and Trasodon is not helping me and my blood pressure is high. And, and she actually, she's, smart, she's a very smart person. She went to, actually she's a teacher. She used to be a teacher, so she's, cognition is intact. So she, she, she asked me about how, how can I possibly help a 92 year old that is blind, living by herself at home with swollen legs. And I guess, I, didn't have the luxury of having a pharmacy so close, but maybe if I will ask a pharmacist like Didi, if we have a patient that is already he already failed every sleep hygiene possible, no caffeine, she's going to sleep at the same time, she doesn't have a TV at home, and she's already on trazodone, which is as, as aggressive as I can go to help her sleep, what can we offer to that patient? Because I actually, I'm gonna tell you what I did, but um, in terms of medications, any, that's not there, that's not that, that's not that page. Any ideas from, from, from your end? To sleep? Yeah. Did you, didn't do Ambien or? Well, that, that, that's exactly the answer I wanna get because I didn't do that. The reason why I didn't do Ambien is because it's a benzodiazepine. And that will increase my chances of falling, right? And so, so sometimes I stuck with this patient that they, they, they really need some help, but they can't, they can't sleep. And they don't really care if they're gonna fall or, or not. They just wanna sleep. And that's a problem. So I, I ended not doing that. That didn't help because she fell anyway. But it, I told her, because she told me, oh well, I, I take a trazodone, I sleep for one or two hours, and then I wake up the whole night. I said, well, why, why you don't do this? Why you go to sleep, try to fall asleep, and if you wake up, then take the trazodone, and hopefully that will help. And I believe that was working, but she, she ended tripping. At, um, she actually was uh, walking out of the bathroom during the day when she fell. She actually hit her, hit her, head, her head into the, com uh, it was a recliner that was there, and she has a head trauma. So, so it's a problem. It's a problem to, to, to go and try to help them. Because when I ask her, well, why not, how about going to a nursing home? Because she already has, she needs help in the activity of daily living anyway. 
any nursing home would love to have a nice patient like her, but she doesn't want to go to a nursing home, and that's part of the presentation. And she doesn't, um, it actually, she doesn't even want to use a walker because she, she's blind, but she certainly can walk around. Um, so that's sort of the point of that presentation that she was proposing there. It is a giant. The, and, and, and honestly, my point here is really is just to share obviously information, but if anybody here knows any way that, I, uh, that, that you can make a difference to prevent falls at least and, uh, at the office, then feel free to share with me because this is, a, this is a huge problem for us. In fact, I remember Dr. Rababur asked me once, do you have a fall prevent, prevent, uh, prevention program? And I told her no because it, it, it is so comprehensive and it's so time consuming and the results are so, um, like the, you can only make a difference if, if we are very successful for one or two patients out of 20, I believe. I think the ratio is 10%. So it's a, in terms of cost effectiveness, it's a big deal. So you really need, a, I really need a lot of resources to really implement a program that will help a patient. Will, it will help one out, of a, one out of 10. So that will be the ratio that we are dealing here. So that's why it's a giant, because we're not putting too many resources on those. Dr. Rosa, too, did yes. you end up putting on Remeron, maybe? I actually didn't. I, what I did was to I it on. I kept, I kept the same dose, but I didn't, change the, I didn't change the medication, because I was worried about falling. And I ended changing the, she was, she was in a diuretic, a Bumex. I'm sorry, she was on Lasix, and I ended switching to Bumex because I was hoping Bumex would get a better GI absorption. But she, I think she just pretty much was, she was unlucky. And uh, what, so this, this is what anybody should know about phones. Anybody, it doesn't have to be a provider or anybody, even at home. The prevalence. The clinical, obviously, the clinical importance, the risk factors, the evaluate, how do you evaluate the patient, how do you prevent or how do you treat them, and then obviously the summary that they have there. The prevalence is this is huge. Thirty percent of patients more than sixty-five. That's a lot of patients. So if you are more than sixty-five, and you have a room with ten people more than 65. In one year, though, three of those 10 people are going to fall. So that, I don't think you can say that about anything in medicine. It's pretty, pretty huge, the incidence. And, and uh, this is also one thing that I, I learned when I used to go to do nursing home rounds. If you want to know if that patient is going to fall, does anybody know how to, how can I anticipate if you're going to fall, if you're going to fall this year? Any ideas? Have you fallen? Exactly. If you fell before, that's it. You're going to fall again. And you double your risk. And that patient have, really have to be, we really have to keep an eye on those. And that's what, that's, what I, what, that's what that means. And it goes higher and higher and higher. We started with 30%. It goes by 10, 7% per decade. So we have then 37, then 40 something. Uh, it's pretty difficult to fight gravity when you age, as we age. This is why, and I, I think I mentioned a few things. I'm really not sure what she mean, meant by this. I, my guess is that 5% of them, they die on the spot. And uh, this is what my patient had, a big one, a subdural, and it was also subarachnoidal. So she, she's a DNR, so nobody wants to touch her, but she's an emergency um, ICU right now. So what we have here is basically what the patient has. So this is the patient here, intrinsic factors. And this is anything outside the patient, like the house, right? So imagine, just, just, just to, to give you an idea, look at this. So any medical conditions. If 
if I ask Carla, how many patients do we have in our practice that they have less than three medical problems? Like none, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe zero. So if you have more than three problems, that's it. You have your high risk of falling, just like that. And then that's big too. And we are used to see elderly patients just they can't see and it's difficult that they, they can't hear. And it's okay because they're old. But that's a problem. You know, that's a big problem because when you can't hear, your balance happens to be in that part of the body too. So your balance is off. Plus you can't see. You can't see anything and even if, if there is something higher than, uh, even, even the levels are also blurry because of the vision. So it, you can't get worse than this. And that's, some people think that's fine. I mean, that's fine, she's 65, she can't hear, she can't see, that's okay. That is not actually. And as you age, then these are all from the patient. And, uh, and how about that one? So, so again, I will have to ask Carla because she, Courtney is not here, but <laughs> so how many patients do we have with f less than four medications? I want you to say zero. I want you to say zero. So anyway, that l more than four is a high risk. More than nine is polypharmacy. I go to a lot of nursing homes in this area, and my incidence of patients with more than nine medication in a nursing home is 76%. And I cover, I cover nine nursing homes, right, Rich? Something like that. So nine nursing homes out of, yeah, a lot of work. Out of, out of I think we have 15 nursing homes. And I'm there, I'm, there. I'm not the one that goes and leaves. So I really check my pharmacy recommendations and I really try to, to stop some medications that I don't need. And I still have 90, uh, 70 something percent. I have to say something about this. These are things that are supposed to help the patient. Either a toilet seat, a walker, a, well, no, I'm not a big fan of canes, but a cane, anything right so this is the problem with this we give these things to the patients and we send them home or we and nobody knows what they are doing with that we just assume they know what to do with this or the someone else is just going to teach them how to use a a, a, a a toilet seat so i because i have the luxury that i can go to the patient's house because the community center is gracious enough to pay for me to go there once a week and, and I don't have to rush myself, so I go. And I saw a bathroom. The bathroom was like a tiny bathroom anyway. I, I, I would guess maybe three feet by four feet. It was a tiny little thing. And it had a commode in between the toilet and the top, and two toilet seats, one on top of the other. And then there was a cane sticking out of the, it was crazy. So I said, I don't even know how she got into the bathroom. So, but I gave her all those things. I, I'm assuming she was just using the cane out of the bathroom or in, and the, um, because she was asking me for a high, higher uh, toilet seat. So I gave her another toilet seat and she ended up putting one on top of the other. It was like, it was like a tower of pizza. They were just bad, just like that. So that's bad, and, and I, we do that. And to, to provide good care is, is very, it's a challenge. And did I make a difference that day? I did, but imagine, I cannot do it for every single patient myself. So, so we need to use resources like visiting nurses, and they are great doing those things when we ask them to do them. Uh, and this, all, obviously, that's part of the environment. And let me, let me just, I want to get into medications, and I think at some point, well, this is past, pretty much past, um, past medical history, and uh, I'm going to go quick because obviously I will, everybody will get that if you have a stroke before, you're going to 
it's going to be easier for your body to lose the balance and, and fall. See, so just well, you can get the picture, right? If you get dizzy, that's important. That's important. That's what the visiting nurse should be doing. And and they're not right. I don't think they're doing that. You don't get calls with, well, with well, actually we do. We do get the calls, but they should be calling more with this one. So the, the if if we we're treating hypertension because if we treat hypertension, you avoid stroke. That's it. We have to treat it. And in fact, if we don't take the vital signs, every single visit, we don't even get paid for that visit. So that's important. And the Joint Commission, the, the last time they met, which was the number seven, they said uh, systolic less than 140, and if you have diabetes, less than 30. That's it. But the problem is that you have to see them more often. You can't afford start having an elderly patient on three medications for blood pressure and send them home and see them in three months. That's, that patient is gonna fall at home. It's gonna, because it's, the blood pressure is gonna drop and she's gonna get dizzy and she's gonna fall, or he. Oh, by the way, if, if you're a female and you, who, who, who falls more, females or males? Females. Oh? females. That's right. And who dies more when they fail? Men. That's right. It's like depression, you know, females, they get depressed, but the, the, the guys, they get killed more than, I mean, they suicide, they commit suicide more than females. My logic is like, males, they are, they, when they fall, they really, really fall. There's not, I've seen them actually both falling, and, and the females are so elegant and, and nice, and the, the, the males are like a disaster, and they, they end up dying, poor thing. But, uh, so that's, those things, yeah, if you have, that's, that's your past medical history, that's the, the chart, the EMR should just raise a flag and say this patient is gonna have a fall soon. And I'm really just trying to get into the medication, but that's pretty much medical problems that they will increase the fall. And this is important in males because they get up in the middle of the night to urinate. As a male, we are not, it's not acceptable to sit down and, and urinate. You have to stand up, because socially we're pre the pressure is that you're not a woman, you stand up and you urinate. But the problem is that it's something called BPH that happens after you age in a guy. And to urinate, they have to push, because it's really difficult to pass that big prostate that is in the middle. And by doing that, you fire a nerve that is called the vagus nerve, and you end up with a vasovagal vagal problem in the bathroom. And it's very difficult to keep the balance when that nerve fires. So my advice to every guy is to get used to go in the bathroom and sit down and urinate if, if you don't want to fall, you know, if you don't want to end up with a head trauma. But that's, that's important. In a female, it's not too much because they're already sitting down, so that's good. So this is, this is a true story. I, I, I also do hospice care, and um, the hospice that I belong got uh, um, a huge visiting nurse agency just bought the, 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 the whole hospice, and now the visiting nurse, they run the hospice. So they are very kind of proactive of go, go to the patient's houses and see them and, and, and do that, because that's what they do. That's what the visiting nurse people do. And they have this case. And I saw, the, I didn't see her doing this, but I saw the patient, and I, I know this, they happen, this happened to her. She ended at the hospital a few times because she was falling. She, I think three times in one year. Then she, she ended with ditch toxicity one time. And she ended with ditch, uh, the, the low level of the drugs in another, in another location. And then she ended with high blood pressure, very, very high, and then low blood pressure in another location. And uh, she, she was tachycardic in one time and then very, very uh, bradycardic in an another occasion. As you can imagine, she has a past medical history of hypertension, CHF, AFib, and those, all that good stuff. So the medical director of that, of that visiting nurse decided to go and visit the patient, right? and asked the patient how she was taking her medications because she was costing too much 
she was the price of her care was so expensive because she was going to the hospital like every week. Any ideas how she was taking the medications? Given the information that I just gave you. Not consistently. <clears throat> it is, this is actually, she will take, she's smart, she was smart, I guess, but not that smart. She will get all the meds out of the pills, out of the pill box, put it into a peanut butter jar, the, the, the whole jar. She will put it there. Then she will move them and, and, then, <laughs> and then take the medication out of the whole jar. So you can imagine some days she will get the digoxin, some other days she will get three digoxin at a time. But if you're not there, because she tells everybody, yeah, I take my meds with peanut butter because they taste funny. But you will not imagine that she's just, and she's, she didn't tell that would, so, so that you can only see those things when, well, I didn't see that happening, but I got, I saw the patient and I actually saw the physician who actually saw that. But I can certainly, Carla, someone from our patient, you would believe they can do something like that, right? Yeah. So, that, <laughs> so that, that's how kind of, um, these little things, they make a huge difference when you get old, a huge difference. And half of what I do is just telling them, just, you know, this medication is for blood pressure. It's not for constipation. And they take it, they don't know. They take it for constipation because they took it once and they have about movement and they believe it's for constipation. So, 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 so the, it, it takes a lot of education and resources to do this. But it's fun, it's, it's nice when you get some good feedback. These are the, the things that are at home. They really don't help the patients. And, and, and again, they're common sense. If you go to anybody's house and you see there is a rug that is all dusty and folding in half, that's the, they're gonna trip and, do, and they're gonna fall. That's, it doesn't, they don't even have to be a, med, a provider. Even the family can just clean the house. But when you offer that, they don't want to. They really, they're really attached to certain things, and they don't want to get rid of them. So it's a challenge to get the house clean or uh, friendly to the elderly. The summary of that slide, of this, uh, this PowerPoint piece, is exercise. If you exercise, you don't fall. That's it. If the patient gets real physical therapy, and exercise, and, and, that, and, and, that, and that's it. And obviously, if you have a nice doctor like us, a nice program like us that will keep track of the medications and everything, then you're really not gonna fall. But if you exercise, you're gonna be fine. And, and then I can tell, I'm not sure about here, but because, well, I did my medical career almost completely here, but in Dominican Republic, I'm from DR, as you can imagine from my accent, they don't. They really. I told my mom, "You have to exercise. You do. You have to do Tai Chi. You gotta do yoga." She laughed. She said, "I'm not doing that. I just, are you out of your mind?" She didn't say that. She is actually. She's a tough lady, but she doesn't want to exercise because ladies don't exercise back home where I come from. So you have to change the culture, which is a problem, and you have a lot of Hispanic patients in this area and Portuguese. It's very easy for an American Caucasian person who has been educated and went through all the education that the system provides to understand that, it's, that what you need is to exercise. But from, a, from where I uh, come from, the level of education is third grade. That's it. After that, you stay home, you cook, and you make sure your family is fine. So it's really difficult to, to get the point when that's the case. What is the, the blood test that I ordered the most? I'm crazy about it. Well, just. Vitamin D. Yes, vitamin D. Perfect, I didn't say her. So the vitamin D, it is number one. You, if you fix vitamin D and you take the right medication and you exercise, you're not gonna fall. That's very important. And I'm sorry, this one, I don't agree with that one. As you put that there, I, I don't have evidence for that one, so don't take that home. I would have to provide you, I would have, as it is right now, I don't have any evidence for that, that the, the hydrochlorothiazide and chlorothalidion will help. But that wasn't me, as I said before. And this, 
are simple things that can help. Did he left, but that's what I didn't do, and she fell anyway. But that's, that's uh, ambient. So you don't want to use them, 40 percent. And this, I disagree, but it is there, and they have the evidence. From my point of view, they just want to sell those, and that's what I think. But it is there. Heat protectors, they, it's very difficult to keep them 24 hours. And the, the moment you need it the most, there is a picture of that down the road. You're going you're gonna to see the picture. <laughs> So the moment you need it the most, you don't have it on, which is at night, in the middle of the night, or something like that. So that's the problem with this. But if you keep them on, yeah, 50%. I, I'm not surprised they put a question mark. And that's the picture. It, do you know why we put those there? Well, to prevent the fracture, right, the hip fracture. The problem is they have to be there. And we have all kind of shapes and, in, and, and sizes. So when I see this at the nursing homes, it's the, the, the cushion is like here. It's like down the knee. It's like a knee protector more than for any, I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they, don't, they don't want to put, but it should be there. It should be there. Not here either. It, it ended up going to funny places, but it, people think this is the, um, this is, the, you really don't want it there. That's gonna make that patient fall faster. You really wanna cover that trochanteric, the major trochanteric area of the femur. That's it. If it's not there, it's gonna be a problem. So that's why I don't love them. And I, you haven't seen, you haven't seen me order it, when, not, not a single one, right? I don't know, I just don't like them. And that's another presentation of a patient that we don't want to do. But that, you see that score there? You don't have to know anything about the patient, but just by knowing this, she, can, she should be doing better than an alendronate. That's Fosamax. And I'll tell you why. Alendronate, vitamin D, and calcium will stop yeah, best case scenario will stop the progression of osteoporosis. So if she is really taking 70 milligrams every week and at least 5,000 units of vitamin D every day and at least 850 milligrams of calcium every day and she has a score of minus three, in a year from now, you're still gonna have a score of minus three and that is a high risk for fall and high risk for fracture. So how can I fix that number? Well, how can I hope it will get better? Okay, yes, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's gonna be for tail. It's an injection, but it's the only, and that's a brand, that's a brand name, and this is not by any means commercial, but that's, the, that's how I call it, because it's easier than the generic. It's a long name that I don't memorize. But it's an injection every day that will drop this number hopefully by 0.5% in two years, and that's it. It doesn't get better. So when you get below three, minus three in terms of osteoporosis, your chances of breaking your hips are lower. And uh, that's the summary. And then after this, it gets into more pictures and everything. But so far, any new ideas that I didn't approve? Yeah. Screen for alcohol. Yes, huge, I, I agree. I, I actually consider alcohol a, a, a medication, so it should be part of the medication list. So that's why I didn't put it, I did not put that into the new, you know, separate item or slice. But alcohol, believe it or not, hello. So <laughs> alcohol falls into, it is a drug, and it's, a, it's very common. In fact, I, I have maybe, maybe 20% of the ladies at the nursing home, they take a shot of brandy at night, they help, that helps them sleep. And it's, it's a good thing, and it and calms them down, they don't need the benzos, 
But yeah, when they go more than that, that's, that's a problem. You can get dizzy and, and you fall. And, uh, and there is something called the, uh, the World Health Organization. They have a new program saying, uh, uh, er it's, it's called actively elderly, uh, like, is there something about, would, is you, can, you, you, you can age, but do, uh, do age with, um, we're very, very proactive about aging, and then they have all kind of resources, but those things are online, and that's tough to, to get them into everybody. And uh, then after, this is just some pictures that she put there. That's what you see when you go to a nursing home. And I think she did this uh, PowerPoint when she, got, when she was in her nursing home rotation. And, uh, this that's that's important. You know what they do now? They do Wii Fit. They do the Nintendo Wii, and it's actually very meaningful. It really helps. And those things help with a coordination a lot. And that's that's how we want to look when we're 80. <laughs> yeah, I love to get that. <laughs> and these are the exercises. I'm not sure if this, but this will be part of Tai Chi. Tai Chi is what we know prevents falls. Yoga too, but ta Tai Chi has more papers. So that, you know, she's Asian, so she was very, I guess, culturally wise, it's okay. And uh, I just have a, a comment. What is missing on that, wheel not on this one, but on, on this wheelchair? The brakes? Oh, the brakes are here. The brakes are there. The what? Fall rest, yeah, that, that shouldn't be there. We, because they promote falling. So that's a good example. You, we should not have foot rest on the, any wheelchairs. And I think we don't have, right, Cindy? We don't have any wheelchairs with, in the geriatrics department. And if we do, we're gonna take them out. Yeah. <laughs> So that, that shouldn't be there. That's, that's why they put that picture there. And uh, so that's how a decent look room would look like. Not too much of a hassle. I don't know, I, I think that's the wheel of the wheelchair. That's not the foot rest, so we're good there. And that's a normal one. What I saw was like up to here. Because it was this and then the medium and then the, the bigger one. It was more like a tower. And then we're getting to towards the end. And just out of this picture, when you have a knee pain, where do, what, and let's say that you have right knee pain, where do you put the cane? On the left? So you, you use the pain, do you use the cane on the good, on the good side? I was told on the, on the bad one. I was, that's, what I, that's what I was told by physical therapy. I, I, I guess the point is that, <laughs> that you don't use that with the cane, I guess. And that will be it. That's my take on falling. You can clap, it's okay, that's fine. <laughs> Elemental, yeah, 850 a day, yeah. Well, I thought you were gonna ask me about vitamin D. And vitamin Because uh, 850 is quite, uh, I'm being shy with 850, up to 1200. But the, the vitamin D, 5,000 units is way more than what uh, some people use. We use 50,000 units, 50, five, zero, 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 zero. Every other day for six weeks, and then we check the blood levels again, because that's huge. If you can fix that, you're not gonna fall, and no, no, you're not gonna go to ICU. I don't know. What age should you stop taking the vitamin D? Uh, what age? And it actually, that's not a geriatric recommendation. It, it goes like this. If you live in this part of the world, which is a little bit higher up uh, above the Ecuador, the sunlight will not go perpendicular, it will go tangential, right? So you don't, we don't get sun here, we really don't. 
so you need to supplement yourself with vitamin D. Actually, you should do it after 30. Chances are before 30, you're not gonna find those. But after 30, like myself, because I'm also dark skin, I have to take 5,000 every day. But that's, you know, after you age, and then you really don't get any sun because you stay at home pretty much all the time. Imagine. So 50,000, you know, I think 50 per week will be good. But that's, that's to prevent our faults, not to supplement, right? Cara. I just have a comment, um, just as an FYI to promote another aspect of our geriatric department is that um, every week we have a, a lady from the Y come and do exercises like Tai Chi and yoga and some low aerobic works with our senior adults at the Caroline Street. And once a month I go there to do a little bit of an assessment for the falls too. That's it. Thank you very much, Dr. Restillo. It was a very informative meeting, and thank you very, very much, and you have a good day. Thank you.